there. I'm Angela Ardolino, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself before I get to tell you everything about medical cannabis. Um, I was diagnosed in 2015 with rheumatoid arthritis, and the only options that were given to me was Humira, which we already know has been linked to lymphoma. I wasn't interested in taking that, so I started my quest in finding something that would get rid of my joint pain. I found medical cannabis. Medical cannabis not only got rid of my joint pain, my mood, my anxiety, and my stress level, everything went away. It changed my life so much that I sold my business and threw myself into the medical cannabis industry. When I did that, I was invited to participate in the very first in the inaugural class at the University of Vermont um, School of Medicine offers a program on medical cannabis therapeutic use and biology, and I went through that program and I graduated. When I went there, I found out that animals have the same system as we do, the endocannabinoid system. When I found out that this not only could change my lives, but my dog's lives, naturally, I was sold. I've taken my two favorite things in the world, cannabis and dogs. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm a very happy person. I also happen to have had a rescue farm. Um, these are a few, a, a few of my dogs from my pack. I also have a rescue farm that I've had for 12 years. I also have um, a grooming, boarding, and retail business. So I was already an animal person that was treating animals naturally. Uh, my grooming salon, we, we try our best to use the best natural products, uh, supplements. Everybody at this show, we carry, pretty much carry their products in our shop and introduce it to our neighborhood that we're in. We're opening up a second shop. So when I discovered this medicine, and I went to find something for my pet because I couldn't use the human versions I was finding because they had extra flavor in it, or they had stevia in it, or they had xylitol in it, because us, we humans, care about the way it tastes. Dogs don't care about the way it tastes. We don't care whether they like it the way it tastes. Why would we give a sick animal some added ingredients like fake baking flavor or fake cheese flavor so that they would eat it. So I ended up developing my own. Um, so I took my knowledge of medical cannabis, and I also have a big knowledge of essential oils, which I call cannabis the, the best essential oil in existence. And I, but I did go with it, I did formulate my formulations with an essential oils expert because a lot of these plants, like a lavender or bark uh, frankincense oil, they all have a lot of the same compounds that cannabis has. And when you combine them with cannabis medicine, they actually help the medicine work better. So with that knowledge that I had, I lived in Florida. And in Florida, it wasn't even medically legal yet. So. I spent my time making sure that not only did it, I get it legal, medical marijuana legal for humans, but that we could start looking into the pet industry and creating products for pets. So for the past four years, I have been teaching veterinarians and doctors about medical cannabis because they are not taught about it at all in school. Like the system doesn't even exist. So I spent a lot of time teaching doctors and vets, which was very strange to be in that position, but they were very open to it. Then we would have trained vets who would start using it or doctors who would start using it. So then the next conference, I would invite them and basically I would just be the moderator and let them tell the story about how the medicine works so well. What is interesting is that four years ago, everything we went through on the human side of things now, the pet industry is having to go through it all. So it's driving me crazy. I'm like, we've already taken care of that problem. We already know what the medicine ha should have in it. Because dogs have 10 times more receptors than we do, so they get the medicine so much better. 
So we're going to talk a little bit about the cannabis plant and how amazing and wonderful it is. The cannabis plant, um, this is actually from a AHVMA's uh, uh, website where you can see all the different compounds that are in it. To this date, they have discovered 114 phytocannabinoids. Phytocannabinoids are what CBD, THCN, there's 114 of those in this plant. You can even see that that one says 113 because they literally just discovered 114 of them now. We also have terpenes, which are over 200 terpenes in the plant. Terpenes are in flavonoids. You'll also both find in other plants like lavender. Um, all the essential oil plants have these other terpenes in it. And then other essential fatty acids, vitamin A, vitamin D, it has it all in this one beautiful plant. But all products are not created equal. The plant has leaves, stalks, and then the flower. In the flower are trichomes. Trichomes are what hold the medicinal properties of the essential oils and cannabis. That's where they are housed. That's where they lived. So when you extract from the cannabis flower, that's where all the medicinal components live. Do they also live in the leaves and some in the stalk? Yes, but not as potent as when it's extracted from the flower. So a lot of you have asked me this question here, what's the difference between marijuana and cannabis? And I'm going to explain it to you. Everything is the cannabis plant. So imagine on one side is THC, I'm sorry, marijuana, and on the other side is hemp. The more THC it has, the less CBD it has, and it's considered marijuana, which is a made-up name that now we're stuck with. It's actually a racist term, but now we're stuck with it. And then if you go to the other side of the scale, you go to hemp, meaning more CBD, less THC. Hemp, also made up, the United States government has just named hemp as 0.3% THC or less. You go even further down the line, you're getting into industrialized hemp, which is what they use for making fiber, cement, and all the other wonderful things. Uh, so this is kind of where you see the line of the different types of, if you're going into a human, you're going to see 1 to 1, 30 to 1. So you can see this line of how much THC can be in it. But THC and CBD are the most important components, and both of them need to be in the medicine to make them effective. THC, CBD, my favorite. THC has already been proven as a pain reliever, anti-nausea, sleep aid, appetite, mood stimulant. It, THC is what gives you the psychoactive feeling, but when you have just 0.3%, you don't get that psychoactive feeling. CBD does not give you the psychoactive feeling at all. CBD also helps THC not be so crazy. So I've told a couple of you, if anybody in here who has gone to a medical marijuana dispensary, either bought flour or they bought a vape, they smoked it, they did not like the THC, it was too tough, you can actually take CBD and it will balance out the, the effects of CBD. You can also, oh, let's go to others. So THC and CBD are our main cannabinoids, but there is a whole bunch of cannabinoids, CBD, CBN, THCA, THCV. There's 114 of them. These are the major cannabinoids, and you can see what they already treat. So this is one of my favorite wheels. This is also one of my favorite education sites, leafly.com. Uh, Green Leaf Media is also a wonderful uh, resource also. So CBD, this is what has been proven already. So I'm not making this up. I'm not, this isn't my opinion. This is what has already been proven, not only in the human um, side of things, but also on the pet. I will show you the research at the end of this. So CBD is, it. It moderates uh, both the binding affinity for CB1 and CB2 receptors. It's a stimulator for receptors. It helps modulate uh, the effects of THC. Of course, 
these are all of the, of the wonderful effects of CBD on its, you know, now I don't say want to say on its own. This is what it does when it's in full spectrum and working with all of the compounds of the medicine. CBC, another very important cannabinoid that you want in it, it on its, on its own when it's working with all the other compounds. I'm just going to go through these fast or I'll be here all day. CBG, they, they're all wonderful. They all work together. They all have a job. CBDA, it's the acidic raw form of CBD. When you heat up CBD, CBDA, it turns into CBD. It also is non-psychoactive, has a million wonderful things about it. THCA is the raw form of THC. Same thing, when you apply heat to it or let it dry, it turns into THC, but in its raw form, it's actually amazing. We're gonna get to the point, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll be throwing cannabis leaves in our smoothies to get these effects. THCV, another wonderful cannabinoid. There's more, there's so much research I've listed next to each thing. Please take pictures or you're getting the, uh, the recording so that you can spend more time on this. And of course, the infamous THC. So a lot of you, how many of you out here are confused about what a full spectrum product is and a broad spectrum product is and an isolate is? So everybody's scared of THC. A broad spectrum product was created on the human market for those that wanted to take medical cannabis but didn't want to take a drug test from their employer and have it show up and get fired. So that's why Broad Spectrum existed. In the pet industry, the only thing I can think of is that it is for people who are scared of THC because they think it's going to hurt or kill their dog. No person, no dog, no mammal has ever died from THC. They actually did a study in 1970 to test how much THC it would take to kill something, to kill someone. They did it on rats, they did it on beagles, and they did it on chimpanzees. Now, I, don't, well, we had, I believe that two rats died um, from asphyxiation from throwing up and choking on it. No beagles died, no chimpanzees died. Chimpanzees are the closest to us. Not only did they not die, their livers metabolized it and they brought themselves back to normal. No LD50 for dogs or animals or humans. You cannot overdose on THC. Now we're going to talk about terpenes. Terpenes are another, um, more things that you're going to find in a full spectrum product that you may not find in a broad spectrum product. A broad spectrum product is a much cheaper product to sell. Isolate is even cheaper and now coming from China. So stay away from a, uh, you have to remember that cannabis medicine, you can't apply heat to it. So if you're getting a baked product, a cookie, a treat, anything that heat is applied to it, they have either killed the medicine, made it more toxic or psychoactive, or they've just completely ruined it. So terpenes are what the plants use to protect themselves. It also what gives them their sense. And then they have a job. When you have full spectrum, they all have their jobs and they all do things. So when I mentioned before, if you're having a bad high, you could go suck on a lemon. Lemon has a, lemon, has a terpene in it called lemoline, and it is also helps dampen the effects of THC. It's worked. I've tried it. Mango. <laughs> Mango has myrcene in it, one of the most important terpenes in there. One of my favorite stories when I was in school is they talked about, imagine a receptor, a CB1 receptor in your brain, and you've taken CBD, and CBD's looking at that receptor like, hi, hello. Myrcene is the lube that lets it go straight to the receptor faster. So all of these terpenes have these jobs, and there's over 200 of them. So they all also have their own distinct, wonderful effectiveness. Here's a few of my favorites, myrcene, pinene, limonene. There's so many of them. They all have their own benefits, anti-inflammatory, pain relief, sleep enhancer, and they all help the cannabinoids do their job. 
Here's some of the uh, effects that you can get from terpenes. Some of the terpenes directly affect the uh, endocannabinoid system. You'll recognize some of them, how well they are. Some of them help certain receptors in the body work better. So they're very, very important to have in your tinctures. And then we're going to talk about flavonoids. Flavonoids are also in a full spectrum product. Full spec flavonoids, you'll probably recognize the, the last one here, which is you know, nature's Benadryl. So it is all of these things that, that are either in separate medicines or taken out are all in this plant naturally. So full spectrum means you have all the major cannabinoids in it and the terpenes and that 0.3% THC which is what's legal in all 50 states now. This is a, a video that I love. That, do we have sound? Do we have sound? Can we turn it up? No? Anyone? Bueller? Well, here's a killer video that you can't hear. <laughs> I don't even know how to like stop it. So I'm going to talk over it while he's trying to get the sound. But um, if you have not watched it yet, Sanjay Gupta has done a five-part series on weed. He calls it weed, but it's about medical cannabis. Um, this is just a little expert from it. Uh, CBD was basically um, made famous by Sanjay Gupta about, gosh, three, four years ago when he told a story about um, a girl who was suffering over 200 seizures a day who now only has two a year from taking a, high, a cannabis strain that was high in CBD and low in THC, which we are all now know is called hemp, but that's what it is. Um, so I wish you could hear it because it's a really great little video. Are we going to just give up on being able to hear it? Okay. All right, well, it's really cool. So what we're looking for and what you've probably heard is something called the entourage effect. The entourage effect is what I am telling you when I say all of these different compounds need to be in the medicine. This is them all working together and doing what they're called. So it's called the entourage effect. A lot like the HBO series, The Entourage Effect, they all work together to make this guy famous, CBD. But with a broad spectrum or an isolate, broad spectrum includes no THC, detectable levels of THC. And when you're processing medicine, you're, process, you're making it go through one more process to take out that THC. And you cannot tell me that other cannabinoids, terpenes, and flavonoids aren't coming out or being destroyed in that, that next step process. Isolate, so you'll see it has no THC. Isolate is just CBD pulled out and made into a powder form so that you can mix it into a liquid or a peanut butter or a honey or bake in a treat. Will you feel some effect from CBD? alone as an isolate, absolutely, but is not effective medicine whatsoever. And like I already warned you, most of it's coming from China now. So a lot like the show, and this actor, CBD by himself, no career, has to have all of the other cannabinoids together. So now I'm going to talk about what all these cannabinoids help with. So we have something called the endocannabinoid system. So do dogs. Dogs have 10 times more receptors. They're called CB1 and CB2 receptors. They, CB1 receptors are mostly found in the brain. 
and CB2 receptors are mostly throughout the body and organs, spinal cord, they're everywhere. They are, and they're layer, and the dog's layers of skin, they have both CB1 and CB2 receptors in their skin, which means if they've got a tumor or a lump or a bump or something on their skin, putting on a salve is going to work very well because it's gonna go right into their skin and act with the uh, receptors. So you can see I've broken out some of the places that you can find the receptors and what, they're, what they are, what they do and what they control and what the medicine interacts with. This is probably going to be the, ca the cannabinoid that you are most familiar with because who loves chocolate? Uh, and do you happen to also love truffles or truffle oil? Well, it has anandamide in it, anandamide in it, and it is considered a cannabinoid. It's something that you will find in chocolate, mushrooms, um, all kinds of different things, rubber. It's, it's wonderful and it's amazing. It interacts with both our CB1 and CB2 receptors. So our CB1 receptors, the CB1 receptor is the most abundant protein-based receptor found in the human brain and central nervous system. These are all the wonderful things that it does. And it is in our brain and in our dog's brains and throughout their body, even in their skin. CB2 receptors, like I said, this is what they're great for, primarily in the cells of the immune system. Their receptors are expressed on T cells, B cells, a great immune modulation, anti-inflammatory, helps bone dis density, it, it goes on and on. This is kind of, again, all the things. The endocannabinoid system is responsible for controlling our mood, our appetite, our stress, and inflammation throughout our body. What happens is when you have a deficiency in your endocannabinoid system and you're not producing your own endocannabinoids, here's this wonderful cannabis plant that produces phytocannabinoids that interact with our system. So it fills up our, our deficiencies and brings our body to homeostasis where the body can either start healing itself or we can change the diet or add supplements and create healing and totally change a dog's life, which I've done many times. I'm gonna talk about a CSU did an amazing um, study. All the studies that are being done right now are being done by other companies, CBD companies. But the, what's important to understand is all the research I'm gonna show you is all on full spectrum uh, extract, not broad or isolate. So they administered 10 milligrams a day or 20 and basically nothing, some uh, elevated liver, liver enzymes, everything else, nobody, no bad, some had vomiting. Uh, I've even had dogs who vomited a little bit, but the medicine still was in them. Um, nothing bad, maybe a little bit of diarrhea from it being such an oil. Um, these are the side effects of THC. Now, if we're going to compare these side effects, these are the only side effects that have been found. None of them are life-threatening. None of them are scary. I'm going to show you what static ataxia looks like. And I know it sounds like a terrible thing, but it's not, I promise. It is basically your dog will seem high from it. Um, dogs, there's another study I'm going to bring up for, uh, I think it was, it's for cancer. They gave the dogs 100 milligrams of full spectrum uh, hemp extract a day to get rid of cancer. So when we're talking about two milligrams, 10 milligrams, or even 37 milligrams, doesn't do it. Remember, the study in 1970, you can't overdose. There's no LD50 on dogs. This is static ataxia. This is a 13-year-old pug, and she was, uh, had a leg injury, and they were worried about her. She had never been on a full-spectrum extract. So first the zoomies happen. Um, and what I, what I want you to imagine is I know what it feels like because I have rheumatoid arthritis. I know what it feels like when I'm achy all over and I don't want to get out of bed or get up or do anything. When a dog doesn't feel that anymore, 
you have a very happy dog. Now, if you look at her over here, she kind of looks a little drunk. Do you see her kind of go off a little bit? And then here's her. This is what static ataxia looks like. Not life-threatening. She slept it off. She was fine. I have seen it happen three times with a full spectrum extract, but it was always small, very elderly geriatric dogs with a lot of deficiencies. This only happens the first, maybe second time that you give them their medicine, and then they, it builds up in their body so they become more normal and they won't have this reaction anymore. But this has only happened with geriatric dogs. So, not too scary. The word sounds awful, but you don't have to worry about it hurting or causing uh, permanent damage. So choosing the right brand. Of course, you want to make sure that it's grown organically because the hemp plant sucks up everything out of the earth. It actually cleans the earth. The good thing is if it's being grown under the, farm, the 2018 Farm Bill, which made it legal, that it is grown organically anyway. So that's why you won't see the USDA organic mark on most products because A, it's probably grown under the Farm Act. B, we have something called a certificate of analysis, which is how we self-regulate, which will show you whether it has any pesticides, herbicides, metals, anything in it. Good, uh, good current good manufacturing pro processing, how do they harvest it, how do they extract it, how do they make the tincture or the salve or whatever it is that you're taking? You also want to make sure that there are other ingredients aren't in it that cause harm. So there really should be on a CB product maybe five to seven ingredients. Otherwise, we don't need it. There should be a carrier oil that helps with absorption, the full spectrum e extract, and then maybe two or three other things but there shouldn't be a whole list of things and there should definitely not be anything on that ingredients list that you can't pronounce. And the certificate of analysis, which I will show you. And you'll want to make sure it's full spectrum extract. Yep. Sorry. You're welcome. So basically what happens in the cannabis industry, the most important part of the plant is the flower because it has all the medicinal com compounds of it. So what happens usually is the flower gets cut off, the rest of the plant actually gets taken away, sold to someone else, it's called aerial parts, and the flower, if you wanna pay for the, so I can choose to, to extract from the flower or from the aerial parts. We do it from the flower because that's where all the medicinal compounds are. So basically, we grind up the material, goes into a CO2 extraction, which I'll show you how that works, and then we get our oil come out. This is the uh, CO2 extraction process, which I am going to show you with this nifty little video. This is the plant, pretend that's cannabis. CO2, uh, supercritical CO2 means that it is kind of between a gas and a liquid. It gets mixed in with the raw plant material to uh, bind to the cannabinoids. It brings them up here, removes them all, it's still attached with the CO2, goes into the cyclone separator where it separates the uh, cannabinoids and all the medicinal properties away from the CO2. CO2 actually goes back up and gets reused, which is awesome. This is called a supercritical CO2 extraction process closed loop. This is the most expensive way and the best way to get the pure medicine. Bioavailability is another way. We also spin it into nanoparticles because if you were to take an oil and on a dog or even on a person, the, mo the most effective and cost effective way is to put it right onto their gums so that it's absorbed right into the bloodstream. If it's a regular standard oil, most of it, 90% of the medicine goes right out of you. If you do it a liposomal, which you're, you're gonna micro emulse it just a little bit, you're gonna get better absorption. And then if you nano size it, make it really small, it's going to be almost 50% or more absorption. And basically, this is what's happening, is imagine this is, these are the gums and this is it. If it's a big particle, it's a big particle and is not emulsified, it takes a little longer to get to, into the bloodstream versus when it's a smaller, 
more of the medicine can be absorbed into the bloodstream. Carrier oils are also, uh, are also important. It's been proven already that these that I've listed here are great carrier oils. They actually help with the uptake and absorption of the cannabis medicine. Um, MCT oil from coconuts is my favorite. Uh, hemp seed oil, which is an unbelievable uh, antioxidant, uh, omega-3 and 6, and has its own wonderful benefits in it. But you can also use sunflower, avocado, grapeseed is amazing, arnica oil. Labeling. So this is one of our labels, which is already wrong. Um, at what you're looking for in the label is a couple things. On our label, and we, I'm very active with the hemp industry, so this is what the hemp industry is actually coming to the FDA and saying, this is what we're going to put on our labels. So a QR code that you can take with your phone and click on, and it will take you directly to the certificate of analysis for that batch. Batch means we do batches anywhere from 1,000 bottles to 5,000 bottles. So there is a number or something that will be shown on the certificate of analysis to show that that bottle was in this batch and here's its certificate. So we make it easy so you can do it right from the label. You also want to make sure that it's for pets. The amount of THC and CBD, which that's what I have to change because I'm not allowed to put the word CBD because there's a drug that has been approved by the FDA called Epidiolex which is a synthesized, you synthesize CBD and THC, but because it's CBD in a medicine, it's now considered a medical claim by putting the letter CBD on my package. So that has to be removed, so it'll just say full spectrum hemp extract, which means CBD is in there. I'm just telling you how much CBD is in there and how much full spectrum extract. So, it doesn't make it easy for the consumer to look at a label and know what the heck is going on. Other ingredients, you'll see it just has lavender essential oil and MCT oil. The FDA statement saying we're not making any claims that this heals or cures anything. It also, the Farm Bill hemp statement saying this product contains less than 0.3% of THC. And of course, a website where you can find more information on the company where you can also find out their practices and how they make everything. This is the COA. This is the most important thing that you want to find. Now, are there people who are testing their products themselves? Yes. So you want to make sure that it's a third party that's doing the testing of the product. We test our product before we bottle it, and then we test it again when we get it and we send the bottle off. So we do it twice just to make sure. In that certificate of analysis, you're going to see the little bit of each cannabinoid that's listed. So you'll see them all listed there. You just need to make sure that it's in there. They also sometimes do it this way where it's a graph chart showing it. This is full spectrum. What it also shows you is what's not in it. No herbicides, no pesticides, no heavy metals. So this certificate will show you everything that you need to know about what you're buying. You'll, it, there should be one for salves, there should be one for tinctures, there should be one for treats. Anything that has this medicine in it should have one of these. And it should be easily found. How do you administer it? I already said once, you simply shake the bottle up because it is a natural product so it may settle. Shake it up, lift their lip, squeeze it onto their gums, and then congratulate them. Try not to come at them like, I'm going to give you medicine, because they will run away from you. Dosing. Dosing is a very uh, crazy thing, because at first, people were so concerned about dosing because they were worried about giving their dog too much THC and causing harm. We don't need to worry about that. We know it's not going to hurt your dog. But on the other side of thing, if you have a very sick dog and you're treating them for something, you want to make sure they get enough of the medicine. When I went to the University of Vermont, I learned that you needed to have higher doses for it to be effective as a medicine. 
which is why we don't start with anything less than 550 milligrams and go up. So for calming, if you have a dog that is fear, anxious, hates going to the vet, hates riding in the car, every dog is different. It does not depend on the weight of the dog. It depends on the ailment and the age of the dog. And basically what I'm really saying is it depends on the deficiencies in each dog or person. So for calming, get, start, with, start low and go high. So you would start, like, say, with a quarter of a dropper, a couple milligrams, wait 20 minutes. If the dog is not completely calm, you give them more. So you decide what your dogs need. Every one of my dogs are dosed differently. My favorite uh, story is my nine pound miniature schnauzer and my 60 pound Doberman Pinscher. The 60 pound Doberman Pinscher, when a thunderstorm comes rolling in, needs about four milligrams to calm down. She immediately calms down. She comes and asks for it. The schnauzer, I need to give uh, 18 milligrams and wait 20 minutes before he calms down. So has nothing to do with weight. Same thing with pain, joint stiffness, allergies. You want to dose it. What you're going to see that you know that you're dosing right is that you're going to see your dog become puppy-like. You're going to see them running around. You're going to see them happy. You're going to see their, their appetite uh, increase. So it's the same way. Start low. If you are not seeing those things, give them more. You have no worry of overdosing your pet. Now, for major ailments like cancer, seizures, uh, autoimmune diseases, geriatric dogs, you're going to want to go a lot higher on the dosage sheet. Um, the one study I said did 100 milligrams a day for cancer. Uh, I had a 17-year-old chihuahua. She was about 90 milligrams a day. If I backed it up, she would have a grand mal seizure. So I figured out she started with four a day to two a day to none, and then I tried to back up and one occurred, so I knew, here's my dose to prevent these from happening. It does build up in their system. It does help the deficiency, so you may not have to give that same amount the entire time, but for a very sick dog, find your dosage and then stick with it for six months and then maybe taper off and see if they need less. Seizure comes back, something comes back, then you know you need to stick with that. It just depends on every dog and what they're suffering from. This is some dosing math, because last time I did that little <laughs> suggestion, and someone said, well, I have a 500 milligram bottle. I don't understand. How much am I supposed to give them? Here's some dosing math. Just take a picture of it. You just divide the milligrams into how many ounces it is, and that's how you figure it out. Each uh, uh, tincture has a dropper where it marks, you know, how many milliliters everything is, so it makes it very simple. Dosing, like I said before, higher doses may be needed. Doesn't matter if your dog's little, big, they may need more to take care of their deficiency. Start slow and increase. This is Daisy's story. I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear. This is Daisy. Nope. No sound still? So this is Daisy. This is Daisy. This is a video that we play in our booth all the time. So it's my annoying voice, and that's what I always hear. This is Daisy. So Daisy was, I have a, uh, I'm in Florida, and I have a relationship with a lot of the vets who treat dogs, and when they've done everything they could and the, and the parent's not ready to give up, they come to me. She was actually surrendered. Uh, they brought her in to be put her, have her put down because this she couldn't This is Daisy. Walk. She's our 17-year-old rescue, and her owner surrendered her to the veterinarian because she couldn't walk anymore. And the vet gave us a call and we rescued her, brought her to our rescue farm here. We took her off all of her uh, prescription medications. She was having seizures every day, grand mal seizures. She had no hair on her feet, on her tail. And we have her on a CBD regimen and she has come back to life. She's become puppy-like. She runs around and plays and she could live to be 20 years old and live a very long, happy, pain-free life. CBD dog. This is... 
So this is what I get to do on a regular basis. Um, owning a groom shop, they a lot of times will come and do a groomer a lot more often than they go see their vet. I was able to say, hey, I noticed this with your dog. I know this all natural, Could it? and it works every time. So um, Daisy was unbelievable because she went from you know, standing in corners and yelping, dementia, no eye contact, to running around, looking up, making eye contact. I mean, there's no denying it. It's unbelievable. Um, we watched this dog come back to life, and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And they were going to put her down. So it's hard. As pet parents, we have to make those decisions. If I'm giving my dog all these prescription meds and it's not helping and her hair, her feet look like that. She had no hair on her tail. She was having seizures every four hours. Who knows if it was from the, all the prescription medications she's on or if she was suffering from something else. But an all natural product completely changed her life like it changed mine. So now I'm going to mention the studies. Oh, good. <laughs> and. Um, these, uh, it's interesting, these studies are interesting because they have to be done by other companies, and other companies aren't sharing other companies' research. I am, because we need to get the message out here that this works, we don't have to be afraid of it, it cures cancer, it stops seizures. So this is an osteoarthritis study, um, I believe this was Elevet that did this one, um, Cornell did it, and you can see that um, they, they had wonderful no side effects, dogs were having less pain, moving around. Um, it, it basically proved everything that we already knew that the medicine could do. Um, here's some cancer studies that have been done that cannabinoids induce tumor cell death, inhibit tumor, uh, however you say that word, and invasion in animal models of cancer. Um, I'm not a vet, I'm not a doctor, but I have watched CBD medicine kill tumors. I know I've told a couple of you this story already. My, one of my dogs just got a papilloma vi uh, tumor on her, between her two toes. And after three days of just doing the salve, she's my dog, so I didn't, I usually do internal and the salve if it's a tumor or a lump. And within two days, it was turning black, like I had taken fire to it. It was killing it right there. And then, let's see, probably three weeks, it completely fell off. And I'll show you some more of our case studies and pictures at the end. Um, I've gotten rid of giant tumors, uh, old labs with grapefruit-sized tumors on their chest. We shrank it all the way down in four months with doing a tincture and a salve. Another one's with big, giant orange tumors on their orange-sized tumors. You know, six months, I see her rolling in the grass. This was a foster. Popped, completely gone, looked like an ulcer was there. Ne cleaned it, next day hair was growing out of it. Epilepsy has already, uh, like I said, there's a FDA approved drug. And the reason that it's an FDA pr approved drug is because it's in synthetic THC and CBD and not the real stuff. But the real stuff works even better. So this is another one, randomized, blinded, controlled clinical trial, four seizures, 16 dogs, no bad effects, and dogs on the CBD oil had an 89% reduction of seizure activity. Anxiety and stress was also tested. Uh, works amazing on that. I can tell you it does. I uh, did not, I knew that it hadn't been known to do that. I just wasn't expecting it. I was expecting my pain to go away, not that my mood would be so much better. Autoimmune diseases, Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. It's an autoimmune disease I gave myself from stress and anxiety. So all through high school and college when everyone else was smoking pot and I wasn't, I should have been smoking pot. <laughs> Infl inflammation. Remember, almost every root of every disease is from inflammation. So if we rid the body of inflammation, we can prevent disease. Cardiovascular effects. And my favorite, neuroprotection. Do you know what you're looking at? 
you're looking at the United States government patent on medical cannabis as a neuroprotectant. So the United States government, I think this is from 1990 when they did it, has known that it is a neuroprotectant, meaning it will stop Alzheimer's from happening. Dementia goes away. It stops it. It protects the brain, and this is being kept from us by the United States government. Can you go back to the carbon? Yes. Thank you. And I can read these things, or you guys can. Inflammation, we already know that the compounds found in cannabis reduce inflammation. They're abundant and diverse. The cannabinoids do it. The terpenes do it. All the compounds work in together to make this happen. This is the autoimmune disease, uh, disease study from 2013. Um, you can see THC alters the microbiome balance, prevents obesity. So you know when this becomes legal, there's going to be diet drugs like crazy with medical cannabis in it. Anxiety and stress. Am I going the wrong way? Yeah. So these are a few of my stories. That's Jolene, the one that I just got rid of her, papilloma. Uh, these are a couple other of our stories. I'm going to go lots of anxiety and stress. You know, Florida, we get thunderstorms. We all know dogs that are freaking out of fireworks. It is amazing for anxiety and stress. A few more of the dogs. I'm going to skip to one that I can show you. Uh, Olivia. Olivia made me um, shocked at how well my own tinctures work. She had this tumor, she's 13, and she had this tumor on her back for basically 10 years of her life. The owner didn't want it to be cut off or put her dog under, but she tried everything she could possibly think of, every natural remedy. She used, uh, she did both the internal tincture, this, she did about 37 milligrams a day, and she put the salve on, and it fell off in two weeks. And that's what it looks like after it fell off. So she took a picture every day, and every day you saw it get smaller, 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 and then completely fell off. So it is one of my favorite stories because I couldn't believe that it fell off in two weeks, and it had been there for 10 years of her life. So she is one of my favorite stories. Uh, I don't know if Odie's story will play. This is Odie. This is Odie. Odie. My baby old man, a.k.a. Barky Von Schnauzer. He's 11 years old and the love of my life. So Odie's favorite thing is to run up the stairs at night when we go to bed. And I noticed a couple years ago that he would stop midway up. And that's when I knew he was suffering from arthritis and joint pain. So the only treatments that I was being offered were harmful prescription drugs How many that people's liver been there? damage and suppressing here's the immune system. Here's a Tremadol, here's a Rimadol, here's an Apoquil. I just not do that for my senior dog. And full spectrum CBD oil was the only thing that worked. I would give it to him and literally within 15 minutes he That's was puppy like an again. Dog. I could see that he wasn't in pain, he wasn't panting, he was running up the stairs. So on Odie I use Ease, which is a 550 milligram full spectrum CBD oil with frankincense essential oil, that was turmeric, me and, my and hemp oil, in the and it's great for arthritis, aches and pains, and allergies. No one likes to see their dog suffer. I know I didn't. And to be able to find an all-natural product that doesn't cause additional harm and helps them is a lifesaver for me, and it brings me so much peace of mind. CBD Dog Health. So, it is, we'll go to our vet once a year and get blood work, make sure everything's okay. But when you are offered those um, prescription drugs, I want you to consider a CBD regimen, a full spectrum CBD regimen instead. Those prescription drugs, I know I don't have to tell this group, suppresses the immune system, does all kinds of things. It doesn't let their body heal. Now, Odie and all my dogs are also on a raw diet. I swear by adored beasts products. I'm a big fan of just about any pro every product that's in in the show floor, but please consider it when you're when you're looking for ease. If your dog is on an Apoquil, which we have a Frenchie on our logo because I've seen more Frenchies with crazy allergies that are two years old and already being prescribed Apoquil. 
It's insane when it's a full spectrum can totally get rid of that and help them. So can a raw diet. So I want you to think of it as a wonderful addition to your raw and natural feeding and healing of your dog. I am Angela Ardellino. Thank you so much. And I'm happy to answer any questions. And if I don't get to everybody, I'm happy to meet you out uh, by our booth and give you more information. I also have a, um, a document that Hernando, I can see you, Carter, wherever you are, um, that you can take that kind of put, six, put it in six tips on how to choose. And at the end of that document, I also have a link where you can go to all of the research on my website and it directly sends you to the research so that you can refer to it. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Hi. Hi. Thank you for the talk. It was excellent. Thank I, you. I learned so much. Um, I have a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. She's 11 years old. She's had mast cell cancer um, three times, four times, something like that. Um, so, but she gets now, and I know it's an inflammatory response. She has had an oral hematoma on one ear that I had to have surgically fixed because it would not go away. She's now developed it on her other ear. Um, and I'm wondering, and she's on CBD. So, that's so should so, I do it or topically I guess is my question or yes. maybe up it this the <laughs> well what the, the biggest question I get is I've already used CBD and it doesn't work now you know why it didn't work if it wasn't extracted from the flower if it wasn't manufactured a certain way if it's a broad spectrum or an isolate it's probably not yeah. gonna work now when you take a CBD isolate or a broad spectrum you feel something but you're not getting the effectiveness of the medicine because they all, that whole plant needs to be in there. So what, uh, what are, are you using a full spectrum product? Yes. And you're sure it's a full spectrum Positive. product? We know, we know where the, it comes from. I would up it. How old is she? 11. Yeah, so she's a senior, she's a geriatric dog now. So I would up it because you have to understand that it doesn't know to go right to taking care of the cancer. It's going to start taking care of all the deficiencies. And if yep. they've got cancer, something led up to that. So I would up it. I told you that that one study, 100 milligrams a day. Yep. So when I up it. it, should I like whatever I'm giving her now, double it, or how do you yeah. how do you up it? Okay. Keep upping it. And what about and a salve? Would that absolutely help? Absolutely, I would put a salve on it. Okay. Uh, I can't remember if I already said this, but dogs' layers of skin have both receptors, which is very unusual. We don't even have that. And each layer of skin, that's why salves work so well. Okay. Thank you. You worked on my finger. <laughs> That's right. She had a dog bite. I've been slabbing her finger with a remedy salve. Yes. Um, oh, sorry. She just passed. I made my bad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So my question is: I was told that as a person, and I'm guessing also with animals, um, you mentioned the carrier oils. I was told that you need to take fish oils to be able to receive the full benefit of the Bullshit. absorption. Okay. Well, I, that's why I'm asking. First of all, it's an almost impossible to find a pure fish oil anymore. So stay away from krill oil, fish oil. Not to say that it doesn't work. Uh, it hasn't been proven that it works, but the problem is you can't find a good source for it. So I would stay away from fish and krill oils. Stay with the MCT from coconuts. Sunflower, hemp seed, all of those are wonderful carrier oils and help with the, the medicine being absorbed. Can you ship to Canada? And if not, do nope. you Nope. Know? So if you're in Canada. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the best, I was just in Canada. The, the good thing about Canada is that you have medical marijuana that's legal. So what you need to do is you need to go into the dispensary and you will probably find a one-to-one -one tincture or you may be able to find a 30 to 1. What that means is that it's CBD to THC. So a 30, uh, thir 30 to 1 THC, meaning 30 CBD to 1 parts THC. And then you're using a human product, so make sure there's no extra flavorings or anything weird in it, which they don't seem big in in Canada. And then you're probably going to do smaller doses because it is a human product. So there isn't actually a manufacturer that's making... If they are, they're being shut down. Um, I know there's, ca there's good uh, Canadian companies. I know that you can go into some stores and get the product, but they're pulling them off the shelves, which makes no sense. Because it's all the cannabis plant. 
Hello. Hey. Um, I have a geriatric dog as well, and are you supposed to administer, administer this separately from like other medications? No, you don't no. need to. Because she's like on stuff, she's on denimarin for her liver and then Synthroid for hypothyroidism, so I can administer that. Yes, it, the That's only fine. drugs that it has interacted with are um, NSAIDs that are, are like propofol and fentanyl, aren't those NSAIDs? Are that it, all it does is that they have found that they need to get more of them okay. because it's trying to suppress and balance it. Okay. But there has been no evidence of any drug interaction so far. If anything, it helps. It's already been uh, recommended for someone who's going through chemotherapy because of course it stimulates mood and appetite and we know what chemotherapy does. Hi, um, Hi. I'm from Australia so we are on the brink of getting CBD legalized very soon. Good. We're very excited about it. Uh, you said that you teach veterinarians um, how to use it. How have you found that approach because that's something we're hopefully going to dive into the second that it um, is legal and we're able to. Well, I um, I just came from the HAVMA, which is the Holistic Veterans Veterinarians Conference, and they had a keynote about the benefits. The great thing is that in California, they're now legally able to recommend it. So they're all coming out and talking about how they've been using it for years and that it works. Um, if you're in a state where the vets don't feel comfortable, we have, we, I mean, we have hundreds of vets that are carrying our products. Some have them right out, some keep them under the counter. Um, from the AHVMA, Dr. Gary Richter uh, gave the keynote on medical cannabis, and he, you know, the vets were raising their hand, going, "Well, how do I, how do I get my vet board to, you know, let us recommend it? You got to go fight them." You got to go fight. I fought hard in Florida to make this happen. If your state is doing something, your vet board's not doing what you want, you've got to go educate them and fight it. We are winning. We are getting somewhere. There actually has already passed through Congress a banking act, which is going to allow uh, hemp companies to actually get legitimate banking because what we have to go through for credit card processing and banking is ridiculous. I have to get the same credit card processors that porn sites have to get. <laughs> okay. Did I answer your question? <laughs> we have time for one more question. Okay, great. Ready? Hi. Um, this is, thank you for presenting. This is new to me and I've been wanting to learn more. Um, I just was, recently was at a conference with a, um, a veterinarian who's with veterinary cabinets cannabis.org, which I see you have up there. Great. Um, in her presentation, she did say that the one possible negative side effect or consequence was that there are um, effects with the metabolism of more than 60% of some of the pharmaceuticals. And that, sorry, <laughs> that hear. it does possibly affect the meta metabolism of pharmaceuticals and could increase um, the effects of that pharmaceutical throwing off the balance. So I guess there might be some there, studies out there saying be it's careful. Po it's possible. And what's the worst part is that you can probably Google that and find somebody backing that up, just like you're going to be able to Google THC toxicity in dogs and find the most scary things you've ever seen. But guess what? It's out there for garlic. It's out there for lavender oil. And we all in this room know better. There's all lavender oils aren't created equal. All garlic isn't created equal. Um, so it's possible. I haven't heard anything. The only thing that I've heard is that it helps medicine work better and or uh, dampens the effects of it. So an opioid, it would dampen the effect of. So you may need more. But if you're taking full spectrum, you no longer need that opioid in my opinion. I don't know where the microphone went. Okay, so I'm, I have, uh, Hernando here has a document for you. We're also over here. I also have a video that I did with Rodney Habib. That's a 19 minute video that explains everything like this really quick. We could airdrop that to you so that if you need to look at it and learn how to talk the language to your patients or your customers or just for yourself, we can airdrop that to you also. But 
We have three of us over there and we can answer all your questions over there. Thank you so much.